Who is the real David Sinclair? Is he an altruistic scientist trying to solve aging for all of humanity? Or is he another deceiving and greedy snake oil salesman? In case you haven't heard, David Sinclair is an internationally renowned anti-aging Harvard scientist. He has published over 150 articles on aging, is involved with over 50 companies, and has received dozens of awards for his contributions to the longevity field. But with his success has come some failure and several controversies. In this video, we'll give you five examples of David Sinclair's work that have stirred controversies. The Grapes of Wrath the first controversy surrounds the plant polyphenol resveratrol, which Sinclair's lab identified over two decades ago. In 2003, Sinclair's group published in the Nature Journal. His team stated that in yeast, resveratrol mimics calorie restriction by stimulating SIR2, which is a yeast gene, increasing DNA stability and extending lifespan by 70%. They said that resveratrol extends the lifespan of diverse species and produces changes associated with longer lifespan. They concluded that these data show that improving general health in mammals using small molecules is an attainable goal and point to new approaches for treating obesity related disorders and diseases of aging. This work led to a collaboration with entrepreneurs to start a company Sertris Pharmaceuticals with an aim to find activators of sirtuins as therapies for diseases and aging and was a media success. International headlines of some news articles called resveratrol a fountain of youth molecule. All the hype paid off literally when Sertris Pharmaceuticals was sold to GlaxoSmithKline in 2008 for 720 million dollars. Since that massive deal, numerous publications have emerged calling into question Sinclair's findings. Studies showed that resveratrol is not a direct activator of SIRT1 enzyme activity, which is the mammalian version of the SIR2 yeast gene. Another lab showed that the original findings by Sinclair's lab were due to a lab experiment, where an artificial dye, not resveratrol, was the compound activating the SIR2 gene. Even rigorous animal studies showed that resveratrol had no effect on lifespan extension. In defense of the negative animal studies, Sinclair said that he wasn't consulted about the proper dose to use in the studies, yet he was a co-author on the paper and the director of the NIH confirmed Sinclair was the one who instructed which dose to use. Unsurprisingly, the human data has been also underwhelming. A Cochrane review summarized it as the limited available research does not provide sufficient evidence to support any effect, beneficial or adverse, of 4 to 5 weeks of 10 to 1000 mg of resveratrol in adults. Some studies even found that resveratrol may have negative effects in humans, such as blunting the positive effects of exercise training on cardiovascular health in aged men. GSK's own research on resveratrol and these types of findings led to the shutting down of the Sertris project in 2013, wasting millions of dollars. Still, David stands by his work and will not back down. He claims to use resveratrol to improve his health and lifespan and promotes it to others through his book, interviews and podcasts. As a result, resveratrol continues to be a popular supplement taken by many people hoping to improve their health and longevity. Number 2. Sir, I challenge you to a duel. Tied to the resveratrol controversy is Sinclair's work on the sirtuin genes. As a postdoctoral fellow in Dr. Leonard Guarante's lab, Leonard and David came up with a hypothesis that caloric restriction slows aging by activating genes named sirtuins. Their thought was that their theory perfectly merged the known life-extending benefits of caloric restriction to the lab's findings that extra copies or activation of SIR2 extended lifespan in yeast. If this theory held true in humans, they thought, activating sir in, in humans could be a way to mimic the anti-aging effects of caloric restriction without constantly being hungry. Along the way, Guarante and Sinclair started to quarrel about how Sir 2 was activated, turning their once close friendship into a bitter rivalry. 
Unfortunately, as with many things in life, their theory may not be that straightforward according to data published from other labs. The life-extending effect of caloric restriction on aging in fruit flies was later shown to have nothing to do with SIR2. Other data surfaced suggesting that this gene actually blocked life extension because inactivation of SIR2 in worms in combination with caloric restriction caused one of the longest lifespan extensions reported at the time. Sinclair, Guarente, and many other researchers still strongly believe that sirtuins are longevity genes and they are actively researching sirtuin activators to extend lifespan. 3. Melts in your bank with the FDA to thank. This brings us to the third controversy surrounding Sinclair's most recent prized longevity mo molecule, nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN. NMN is a precursor for creating NAD+, a coenzyme that is essential for many metabolic processes. NMN has been shown to provide myriad anti-aging and neuroprotective benefits in mice, including boosting physical activity, slowing cognitive decline, increasing insulin sensitivity, and decreasing weight gain. Levels of NMN also decline in humans with aging and some studies have shown that supplementing with NMN may have benefits similar to those seen in mice. Thus, the controversy is not so much about the potential benefits of NMN, it's more about the NMN sirtuins link and ownership of NMN. Just like with CR, the scientific community is divided as to whether NMN and NAD plus precursors act via sirtuins. What's causing more outrage is the recent FDA ban on NMN sales orchestrated by Sinclair's company. Last November, the company Sinclair co-founded, Metro Biotech, convinced the FDA to prevent sales of NMN as a supplement because Metro Biotech had registered and publicized NMN as an investigational new drug. All sales of NMN as a supplement were halted. David wrote a politician-like public response to the NMN ban in which he tried to distance himself from Metro Biotech without addressing the core issue of his company monopolizing sales of the molecule. 4. What's my age again? Epigenetic clocks are the new rage in the longevity field, with many companies jumping on board claiming that epigenetic clocks can tell you your true biological age, defined as the actual age of your body. The problem is that the evidence is not there yet, according to many experts. Epigenetic clocks measure hundreds to thousands heritable DNA modifications that do not alter the genetic code, typically methylation tags. Computational or statistical regression analysis of these epigenetic modifications show they are strongly associated with biological age and can predict mortality and even onset of some age-related diseases at least in animal models. One issue is that we don't yet know what aspects of aging these clocks are measuring. They may also be measuring only a proportion of changes that occur with aging and therefore miss certain important markers of health and aging. Some scientists, like Dr. Sarah Hag, argue that methylation clocks are inconsistent and have limited clinical use because they were built from population analyses and research, not for the individual level. Dr. Matt Kaberlein put it this way, and even if someone does change their lifestyle in a way that lowers their biological age as measured by these clocks, will they have a longer life or a lower risk of disease? We don't know that yet. This hasn't stopped Sinclair from advocating and selling epigenetic clocks to the public. He recently launched a new company to measure biological age via epigenetic clocks called Tally Health, which uses a proprietary clock his lab developed. 5. All on board the hype train The last controversy surrounds Sinclair's quality of research and public portrayal of the anti-aging field. From early on in his career, Sinclair started to become unpopular with some of his peers. During his postdoc in Dr. Guarante's lab, many of his lab mates disliked him because they suspected he was stealing their ideas. He's been recently called out by Dr. Charles Brenner for not conducting non-blinded experiments and was publicly announcing the results prior to performing the experiments, insinuating that the data was manipulated. Scientific merit aside, the biggest problem the scientific community have with Sinclair are the scientifically unfounded claims that he makes to the public about longevity research. Dr. Steve Ostad said this of Sinclair, 
You can listen to the stuff he says on TV and be like, what the hell is he talking about? An anonymous Harvard professor had the following to say. He speaks out about how he makes himself young and says stuff that would be embarrassing for any normal scientist to say. Dr. Charles Brenner said this too. How did David go from an evidence-based yeast researcher to a person completely untethered to science, who tells people he's reversed his age, he's not evidence-based, who when confronted in public about his scientifically unfounded public messages or research, Sinclair refuses to discuss these topics and sometimes blocks the individuals from his social networks, like he did with Dr. Brad Stanfield and Charles Brenner. Accomplishments while there are controversies surrounding Sinclair's work, it would be unjust and short-sighted to not give him credit for his many academic accomplishments. Predominantly in advancing research on geroprotectors, which are drugs that delay aging, and the epigenetics-focused informational theory of aging. For instance, Sinclair's lab have made significant advancements in developing the small molecule NMN and epigenetic reprogramming to treat aging-related diseases and possibly aging itself. It should be also noted that most of his peers, including those he feuds with, agree that David is a brilliant scientist. Such as Dr. Alex Zavaronkov, who said, Sinclair is a top guru in the longevity biotechnology ecosystem. Or Dr. Steve Ostad, who said, David is a superb scientist. You talk to him ab about science and you won't find any more knowledgeable, incisive experimentalists as David. Equally important, through his public ventures, David has intensified the spotlight on the anti-aging field, resulting in substantial growth of research, funding, and businesses in the longevity field. This is exemplified by his many peer-reviewed publications, thriving laboratory, and businesses. Ultimately, I don't think it's right to judge Sinclair solely based on his alleged transgressions. His friends, like Steve Ostad, acknowledge that he is a complicated guy. Being complicated and flawless is on par with many visionaries, from Isaac Newton to Steve Jobs to Elon Musk. But for those individuals to be viewed positively in the public eye and build a strong legacy, they must own up, attempt to repair, and learn from their wrongdoings. If any of these allegations are true, I think this quote sums things up nicely. Mistakes are a fact of life it is the response to errors that counts. Nikki Giovanni. Time will tell whether Dr. Sinclair is an honest and well-meaning scientist. Let us know your thoughts below.